I'm here with Rob Hardy. We are kindred spirits, brothers from a different mother. Um, and I just, you know, we, this is gonna be an interesting conversation about marketing authentically is what I'd say, but you might, you might say something like, you know, in a more friendly way, but let me, let me share, uh, Rob, let me just kind of share your background and we'll, we'll get into it. So Rob, your website is called Ungated Media, which you bill as the missing instruction manual for 1000 true fans. Uh, love it because that's that's uh I've, I've really appreciated that concept for years too and that's i i mentioned it all the time mm -hmm. um so your your the membership your membership is an oasis for creators striving to do the work that only they can do to market in a way that delights people and to enjoy the long game of internet business uh you're currently developing a new philosophy of marketing that's rooted in friendliness play non-coercion and cheerfully subverting the status quo. I love it. There's so much we could talk about, um, you know, because we are so much on the same wavelength on various things. So um, let's start with let's start with the key key idea, which is inside out mm. and bottom up. What do you mean oh, by that? <laughs> this is. This is... It's weird that I have like my own philosophy and when asked like, what's your philosophy, Rob? I'm just like deer in headlights. <laughs> but I think it, I, I like to think in binaries now, even though I realize there's always plenty of, of course, room in the middle, yeah. shades of gray. Yes. So I like to think about inside out business versus outside in and bottom up versus top down. I spent the first, I don't know, six, seven years of my marketing life, my online business life, my creative person on the internet life, um, doing top down and outside in. Oof. And give, what give I mean me one, by that. Give me one second. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. So I'm sorry. I interrupted you six, seven years. Go, go ahead. With, mm. with outside in top down. Yeah. So this will take a little bit of explaining. Sure. What I mean by outside in is that my disposition towards the world was looking for answers outside of myself. Mm. I, I approached business and I approached marketing from a standpoint of how can I find the right answers that other people have already figured out? I approached it from how can I find a profitable niche, a profitable business idea? How can I build a funnel that is tried and tested and true and that works based on all these conversion and psychological principles and all that? You know the game. And... I always felt a sense of um, maybe discord is the right word, a sense of, of disease, unease around those answers because they never, they never quite fit me. I never felt at home in that world, but there's always a, a sense driven by insecurity that who am I to do things any differently than what I'm seeing from everywhere else out in the world? Like clearly all these people are smart. They figured it out. If I want to succeed, which I do, I shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. I should just play the game as I see other people playing it. So that's what I mean by outside in. Top down is, is largely an extension of that. It's, it's about trying to figure out all the right answers ahead of time, building the perfect strategy, the perfect funnel in your head, and then relentlessly trying to execute on that strategy before you really engage with the real world. So it's about building, building systems and putting together puzzles in your mind rather than engaging with the world. So for me, bottom up is, is fundamentally about experimenting. It's about letting go of the need to have all the answers right now, letting go of the need to, to feel like you're in control because all that ever is is an illusion. We're never in control of anything. Um, and then just approaching this question of marketing, of business, of creativity from a stance of curiosity and play and just going out into the world and trying shit to see what happens and then learning, iterating, growing, seeing where you end up. And the thing that I keep finding is that that paired with this idea of inside out, which is where I, I do some deep introspective work to understand my, my inner terrain, my values, my worldview, my various spiky edges and perspectives to see what really emotionally resonates for me. 
And I use that as a jumping off point to go out into the world and run these little bottom up experiments. Like that has been transformative in, in the way I do business in ways that I can't even explain. It's like, I, I spent so many years living just like trapped in my head, like consuming and consuming and consuming and trying to build like these perfect intricate systems. And they never really worked in the real world. But now I've let go of the need to have those answers. And I'm just sort of flowing with, with business, with creativity, with life. And, and, and it's working. It's work. That's the thing is like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a place of ease. I'm having fun. I'm making yes. a lot of friends. I'm creating yes. interesting content. Yeah. And I'm ending up with the same business outcomes right. that I was, that I was just like pushing and forcing and yes. trying so hard before. Right. right. And they always seem to like elude me when, like the harder yeah. I, I tried to force it, the further away those things would get. Oh like my it's gosh. one of those paradoxes, but oh. yeah. So bottom out or bottom up inside out. I don't I know if that it. still makes sense. I might need, it, I might need it, a better way to clarify that. Yeah, but. no, but definitely. I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, this is everyone watching this. This is why I'm, you know, we're, we're I'm, I brought Rob here because, you know, uh, and and I want to encourage everyone to visit your site. Um, I love the the simplistic elegance of it. Um, I love the way you write as well. You know, it's like uh, the, you know, I I feel like you're like we we think the same thoughts, and it just comes out very elegantly in your writing, and <laughs> it's it's Thanks, really man. great. And, and That's how I felt reading your site is like oh, why man. is why is George writing my words? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's this is really good now. Um, this is where a lot of people, the, the loudest voices tend to be the, 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 the top down, you know, outside in people. And this is why this is a bit of an oasis, you know, mm -hmm. from, from all that. Um, and speaking of oasis, you also talk about this idea of running an oasis business. So yeah. What is, what is that? Yeah. Say more about yeah. that. It's just, so I, like, I just love this as a metaphor, this idea of, uh, this idea of a little space you stumble across that is so nourishing mm -hmm. and lively and supportive of your life. And in fact, it's surrounded by, you know, by desert, like that's what an oasis is in a place that's barren and unfriendly and, and just like generally like the exact opposite. And I, I don't know, it's one of those things that I, I think I sort of intuitively stumbled into is building businesses that have that feeling. Like my, my first business was called Filmmaker Freedom. And at least once a week, people would literally, I don't know, just out of the blue be like, yo, I just stumbled across this place and it feels so different from everything else in like everything else that surrounds it. And like, that was, that was something that was sort of like baked into the DNA of it. Because when I started building that business in 2015, the landscape of, you know, like filmmaking blogs and photography blogs and whatever, it was almost entirely around gear. Like people were obsessed with gear. They were obsessed with like the latest, fanciest tools there is, there is very little talk of some of the deeper stuff around telling meaningful stories around, and, you know, some of the stuff around like the logistical challenges of making a film. Like there's, there's things that really move the needle in terms of producing beautiful art and nobody was really talking about it at the time. And I kind of had this, um, screw this, I, like nobody else is writing about this stuff. So I'm going to. And so I ended up building this little site and I wrote like a lot of, a lot about the mindset, a lot about like the deeper, more psychological elements of the craft of, of cinematography and editing and all that. Um, and over time, it just culminated in a, in this online world that felt completely different from everything else that's around it. And that's, um, it's something that I've continued to try to do with everything else that I'm doing. Like ungated now is meant to be an oasis for people who are really, really tired and burned out by what I call the online marketing industrial complex, which you oh, yeah, I love that. there's, 
<laughs> it's a great, great term. <laughs> a lot of loud people making yes. a lot of very sexy promises. Right. That yes. having bought into all those promises for years oh, and yeah. having been completely burned by them. Yeah. <laughs> and, Me too. And realize that they don't align with my values. Like I, I just, I drew that line. Mm -hmm. But now it's now, yeah, now Ungated is meant to be an oasis that gives people permission to operate outside of that yeah. marketing industrial complex, to follow their own values, to really do the work that nobody else but them could do, to market in a way that feels good, like all these things that are, yes. are sort of like top line for me. But I totally. want to always protect and preserve that, that oasis feeling that somebody feels genuinely safe and nurtured and supportive yeah. when they're in my little world. So good. Now, it's so interesting because I, like I said, we've, we've been on the same journey, you know, because I too, uh, when I started creating content, I was very much like, my God, people, I, I so disagree with so much of what's happening in my industry. I need to talk about that. And so I started talking about that. And I started saying, to everyone's relief, you don't have to do those things anymore. <laughs> And, and you could try something more authentic instead and blah, blah, blah. And that just the rest is history. But, but it, it, I, think, I think we maybe both stumbled on this idea and it was like we, we did it. How, what, what, what advice, I guess, if you were to give advice to somebody who is saying, well, I feel like I'm, quote unquote, just another life coach or I'm just another, you know, I don't know, holistic healer. Um, how do I create an oasis like especially give you know good example like what whether you're talking about life coach or holistic healer or whatever it's like it's like i'm already in an industry where people care so much about their people it's like I, it's not like caring more is going to be the way to go because i'll be burning myself out if i care more than i mean people already bend over backwards you know in my industry like <laughs> and maybe so what would you say what would you say to that like how how, how do you create uh the difference an oasis you know in yeah. that kind of situation yeah it's interesting so i i come back to this idea of a thousand true fans mm. um, a lot it's yes it's sort of yes. like the guiding heuristic for a lot of what i do yes and the beautiful thing about that that number which is arbitrary like it could be 100 true fans it could be ten thousand, what whatever but it's ultimately it's a tiny number like nobody has to win the entirety of whatever market they're in, like whether, you know, the life coaching market or the holistic healing market. Millions of potential clients. Yeah. All you, like, all you have to do is resonate with those handful of people that you are, that are, that resonate with your, your vibe, for lack of a better way of putting it, who see the world you, you do, who see the industry, the, the set of problems that you solve the way you do. So I have this, um, this framework that I call fascination stacking that I'm still fleshing out a little bit that just in terms of how I talk about it. But the way I think about this is that a fascination is a point of emotional resonance. It's a singular idea, topic, something about you, your story, something that, that resonates with both yourself and the people that you serve, the market that you're in. A fascination stack is basically a tapestry of all of these little emotionally resonant ideas that you weave together over time. And so I don't I don't know how like how much you are into you or the people you serve are into like positioning and differentiation and personal branding. But what I found is that a lot of those a lot of those business tools and processes are extraordinarily top down. Like yes. positioning, yes. the big idea generally is like you have to have like one big thing that differentiates you from the rest of your market and create literally a little blue ocean and like whatever. Right, <laughs> and that that puts an extraordinary amount of pressure on themselves to find that one big thing. And most people don't have one big thing that will meaningfully differentiate them from everybody else. And especially like these really crowded spaces like life coaching, right? But we all have dozens of little things. We all have tiny little perspective shifts that are different from everything else that's in our space that cumulatively added up make us different, will make our work feel different when the right people encounter it. Those 1,000 people, those 2,000, those 500 people in this true fan model. And that's the, that's the idea, right? Is, is you can build this, this bottom-up 
I don't, I don't know. Like, see, that's the thing is like, I don't know that personal brand is the right word. I don't know that that sense of differentiation is the right word. You know, you know what, to, what phrase yeah. I use? I use energy signature. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I, I'm sure I didn't come up with that word phrase. I'm sure I probably saw it somewhere, maybe even subconsciously, but I just started to say, people resonate with your your true fans resonate with your energy mm -hmm. signature and then people go what what does that mean i say i don't know but it encompasses yeah. everything from how you talk how you how you how you look how you write the th stuff you write the colors you use i mean everything it's all in kind of someone's gonna say yeah. well that's personal brand like fine you could use that term if you want but, but like there's something beyond that you know but it's and also includes. I would say it also includes even like if you believe in this stuff, astrological compatibility or or, or yeah. something like that, or even like soul group, you know, alignment or what whatever whatever you know whatever people believe in. I think that the one thousand true fans or ten or hundred or ten thousand um, is something like it's meant to be. Um, yeah. If you if you but of course you 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 pair it with your own efforts to find them. It's like, yeah. we were all, we were all, we were all placed here on different parts, sides, different at parts of the planet. And it's, it was our adventure to find each other, you, you know, yes. dude, <laughs> my, the rallying cry for literally everything I do now is find the others. Like I used to be, I used to be a find your niche guy. Um, before, like, I don't know, I have a whole very complicated history with the word niche, um, uh, mostly because me too, me too. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing is like, I have a very clear definition of what it means in my head, but, okay. and for me, it's just like a, a, a very specific sub market subculture. Like it's a group of people who congregate around something shared identity, shared pain. Mm. A lot of people, when they hear like, find your niche, they hear, build a personal brand, do your positioning, choose a topic that you talk about. Like there's, there's For so the many rest different... of your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it, yeah. It creates so much, so much, pro... this is neither here nor there. The, the thing though, is that like finding a niche is very top down. It's about like, here, go, f... it's, it's top down and, and outside in it's going out into the market and like finding a little like subsection of it and like hoping that it'll work out. Whereas finding the others is is inside out and bottom up. Like finding the others is about understanding yourself so that you can like look for your reflection in the world. You can go find your people. And like, and it, and it all ties together, right? With the, like the fascination stack thing. Like it's, it's all the same thing. It's just understanding yourself so that you can find those handful of people who truly dig your vibe. Like, um, yes, yes. And I, now, it's yeah, so interesting. And you know, one of the common ways to do marketing online is SEO, right? Search engine optimization mm -hmm. and keyword research. Like you're laughing because, and I laugh too, because that how, how much more outside in can you get than that? It's like, all right, let's find out what the masses are searching. What's the highest volume keyword that's the least competitive. And mm -hmm. now you got to fit, fit yourself into that shape of that keyword. Yeah. What is your what oh, are your man. thoughts on this SEO stuff? I have I have a lot of I have a whole history with SEO, but okay, yeah. you just you just like like this idea of fitting your like this is another one of those binaries I'm playing with now is this idea of being a contortionist versus an expansionist. And when I was when I was doing the top down outside in thing, I was always contorting myself to fit somebody else's definition, like to fit within somebody else's definition of success, to build businesses that looked like what I thought other people wanted and to serve, to, I don't know, to serve a market that wasn't really aligned with me anymore. Cause like I eventually kind of grew out of my, my sense of, of being a filmmaker, but just through sheer like inertia, like I stayed there far, far longer than I thought I should always sort of contorting myself. The expansionist, on the other hand, is about starting from the assumption that you are a complex, multifaceted human being who's always growing and, and evolving and making that the, the expectation for how you move through the world, both with yourself and with your audience. Because like I, I know so many creators who get who, who start off from a place of like being really niche down and then loving it and then finding success with a certain type of content or a certain type of product. And then more and more people show up in their world sort of expecting, 
expecting that same thing, even though emotionally the creator has moved on, they're not excited by it. It doesn't right. make them feel alive anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it leads, it leads to people feeling really, really sort of burned out and trapped by these, yes. these businesses they've built. And that's why, I don't know, like, that's why I'm at this place where I'm really open about the fact that the business that exists now is not always going to be, because is not right. always going to exist in this form. Yeah. Um, that I'm, I'm going to evolve. I'm going to keep following yes. my curiosity. And that's the expectation that I set with my audience. Right. Um, right. Knowing that as I evolve in new directions, I'll pick up new people and some mm -hmm. people will probably fall off and that's, that's okay. Natural. But yeah. But ultimately the goal for me is to, to love what I'm doing every day, not just today, but 10 years from now. And that is going to look different than it does from, from right now. Yeah. So that doesn't answer the question about SEO, but no, I think it, it's another one of my, it is my it's, favorite little binaries. It's, it's beautiful, man. Um, I want to just, I, I encourage everyone to, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, um, I've only read a few of your articles thus far, but every, every single one, I'm like, ah, oh, this is beautiful. It's elegantly stated and it's just, it's fascinating. It's, there's fascination there. So uh, I, I do encourage everyone to read. And also um, I encourage everyone to check out your membership, uh, which both your blog and your membership will be linked below. Uh, but the website is ungated.media. The, the extension is not, it's not .com, it's .media. So ungated.media. So anyway, your membership is really, really cool because um, it's sort of like your, your HQ for your true fans. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, you know, so, so here's the thing. Um, I have now it's, you have a pay what you want, pay what you can pay what you want model um, uh, for your membership. I have usually disliked pay what you want, pay what you can, but somehow the way you're doing it is playful enough to make it enjoyable. So mm -hmm. I want to, I want people I, to check that out too. <laughs> I want to, I know we have a, we have a hard out, but yeah. I want to hear more about why you think it felt that way compared to others. Cause I, it's um, really, really, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, because uh, with others, I felt like I was like, like, I don't want to disappoint that person by paying too little. Um, and I also want to don't feel like a sucker by paying too much, mm -hmm. but the way you've placed it, it's like, how much would I love to give? And I know no, it doesn't matter how much I give, you know, it's, I'm in. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's just something different about it. Anyway, so folks, check it out. <laughs> that. Uh, that made me really happy. Cause like, yeah. I, like I'm always thinking about how to, how to make things feel good and how to communicate. Yeah. Like friendly, friendly, no pressure. I don't know. And it's not even sales, right? Right. Um, but, Invitation. But yeah, it's creating yeah. a vibe. Like everything yeah. is about creating a vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know that I always nail it as much. No, as of course, of course. And we, we can always keep finding what's most authentic and true and, and, and like good, like you said, good feeling between us and that true fan, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. Thanks for the work you do. Uh, of course, this is one of many conversations, I'm sure. And uh, folks, this is just an introduction, you know, to Rob's work. So be sure to click below, click the links, and you'll you'll see why uh, why I'm a true fan as well. So thank you so much, George. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and uh, till next time. <laughs>